my main terminal file manager is LF. And while it does lean a lot more towards the do-it-yourself side, it's still a fairly good middle ground between write everything yourself from the ground up, modifying the source code, and a complete package like, say, Ranger, for example. But today's application fully embraces the side of do-it-all-yourself. This is SFM, the simple file manager. Out of the box, it's configured well enough to use. It's by no means a powerful terminal file manager, but it does the things that a basic terminal file manager needs to do. And like, say, VIFM, it is a dual pane file manager. So these two separate windows in here are actually two separate directories at the same time. So I can be in the .config directory in this one, and then in a different directory in the other one. If we want to switch between the panes, that can be done with the space key. This interaction style can be incredibly useful when moving files and folders between two locations, but you don't want to go and leave that previous location. For example, let's Let's say I want to go and take the htop folder here. If we go and press the Y key, that is going to go and copy that file. Then we can go back over here and press P, and that is going to go and paste it in the other directory. But we can go back to this straight away and do whatever else we need. I should mention that the fault bindings are fairly Vim inspired. Not to the same level of something like VIFM, but what you'd normally expect from a terminal file manager. So J and K are going to go up and down. You can use the arrow keys if you really want to though, so keep that in mind. We can go into a directory with L and we can go out of the directory with H. And then if you want to go and delete something like that HTOP directory we copied before, that can be done by pressing D. Not DD in this case, but when you press D, it's going to give you a deletion prompt, which I always love love to see, typing yes is going to delete that. By default, we can also see all of the dot files, which is the way that I like my file managers to work, because the idea of hidden files under Linux basically doesn't exist. There are so many incredibly important files you want to modify that are hidden files. They're more like slightly obfuscated and slightly annoying to find. But if you want to go and hide them, that can be done by pressing the dot, period, whatever you want to call the key. Now instead of doing a paste like we did before, if we instead want to go and do a move, that works in basically the same way. So let's go and yank this folder here, and then go back over to the other folder, and then do a capital P instead of a lowercase p. Now one thing you're going to notice is if I go back and press capital P again, it says there is nothing to move. So whenever you want to do a paste or a move, it's going to need to be loaded into the buffer first. That is done with the Y key, and then after you go and do an action on it, then the buffer is cleared. But maybe you don't want to go and modify just one thing. Luckily, there is also a visual mode, we're going to call it. Pressing the V key is going to activate that, and then as you go and move down, we can select as much as we want. Pressing the Y key on that is going to go and yank all of those. And then if we're going to go and paste it once again, pressing P is going to do that. And that works exactly as you'd expect. And then deleting also works in the exact same way as well. Select them with the visual mode, press D, and then type yes. And now we're good. While I like the option of having a group selection mode, it's not my preferred way to work with a file manager. What I typically prefer in a terminal sense is I like the idea of having markers. So I can go and select this one here, this one here, this one here, and they don't have to be in a group, but if they are in a group, I can go and select that as well. Also, other things you'd expect to be here, like going to the top of the directory with the G key, going to the bottom with the capital G key, work the way you'd expect as well. Now, when something is a symlink in this application, it makes it very clear that it is a symlink. So rather than just saying this is the file name and having it in a different color maybe, this actually shows you where the symlink points to, which I think is useful in many contexts, even though I wouldn't be using it every single time. And you can also filter the directory with the slash key. Now this is going to filter the one you are currently selected on, so in this case, in the left pane. If we go and search for DIS for the start of Discord, we'll see there are four results. We have Discord, Discord Canary, Discord Overlay, and then some random critter file that happened to have DIS in its name. So when you search for a string, it's not necessarily going to be at the start of the name, 
as long as that string appears somewhere in the name, it will appear as a result. Initially, I didn't like this way of doing filtering. I preferred the ability to jump between each of the different match files. But since then, I have come to like this filter method. There's also not a separate undo filter button. If we want to undo the filter, pressing the slash C again and searching for nothing will bring back all of the results. So far, everything I've shown you has been with a single key binding. But you don't just have to use a single key. This does support multi-key as well. And there are some multi-key bindings out of the box. So if I go and press the C key, we're going to see down the bottom left, there is a list of keys we can press alongside that key. So each of those keys is the next key in the chain that isn't the entire combination itself. For example, if we press the W key, that is now going to do a file rename. Now, when you have any of these prompts, if you want to get out of the prompt, you don't have to give it like some dummy data or anything like that. If we press the escape key, it's going to safely exit that. But the file rename works a little bit differently than a lot of other file managers do it. So rather than going and automatically filling this in with text we can go and change, the original name is part of the prompt. So if you want to have the name but slightly modified, you can't exactly do that easily. But if I want to change it to something completely different like say obs underscore logo dot png because that is what it is, now it's got its name changed. Or you can change the owner by using co or you can go and change the flags by doing CF. Now, I didn't mention file opening out of the box because I wanted to lead into the way that configuration was done. So like a lot of terminal file managers, it doesn't hook into the way that the rest of your system opens up files. It has its own configuration method. So you're going to notice that out of the box, a lot of files don't open unless you happen to be using the way it's set up out of the box. So you might have guessed by the fact that it's called SFM or Simple File Manager, but this is a suckless inspired application. So the configuration is done through the C code. But in this case, it's not exactly the cleanest C code. So the way file opening is done, it's weird out of the box, but it's fairly straightforward. It's controlled by a couple of character arrays basically strings. So we have this character array and we have these character arrays. So these character arrays here, these define the software that's going to be used. And this is where the first problem happens. Rather than naming it the type of application it is, so MPV being a video player, a whatever you want to call it, something relating to video, they've named it MPV. So if you change what is being opened, then your variable name no longer aligns with what's actually happening. The only reason why this one is different is because this one is the only one I've gone in my way to actually change. Now, if you want to pass in any options for the applications, those need to be a separate string inside of these brackets. So MPV and then comma in another string, dash dash full screen, or in the case of NSXIV, I'd probably also want to include dash capital A, I think is the option to make GIFs automatically play. The second section is a bit more straightforward. These are just file extensions. They're considered this type of file. So all of these are image files. All of these are object files. All of these are video files, so on and so forth. And if you don't need to add an extra application and set of extensions, you don't need to modify the rules array that is here. But if you do, Basically, just copy the format that is here because I have no idea how this works. And speaking of things that aren't entirely clear, modifying keys. So the default key bindings are going to be available inside of the man page. So if you want to find those, those are pretty straightforward to find. Adding new ones, though, requires you to know what some of these functions actually do. And this is the major problem I have with this application. So generally, the suckless applications, while they are horrible code bases that have no documentation whatsoever, they at least have well-named functions, relatively well-named. And if you know C well enough, you can dig your way through it. In this case, it's a little bit harder, though. The biggest problem I have here is using these short names for the functions. Like, what does move underscore ver mean? And why is there an underscore here 
but there's none underscore for MVBK. I'm guessing that's move back, but what direction is back? Does that mean back through history? Does that mean back up through the list? What, what does that mean? This is the part where you want to have documentation to explain what that means, but it doesn't. It's just a wall of C code that you sort of have to just know what it means. And people can scream self-documenting as much as they want, but when you don't have documentation and you also don't have well-named functions that make it very clear what is happening, all you've got left is spaghetti code. Because to track down anything that's happening, you need to jump around the entire code base and dig through everything. If you don't want to have documentation in the code base, I can understand that. But if your goal is getting people to modify the code and add whatever features they want like that, you need to have at least external documentation. It's not as convenient, but it will do the job. That would be in something like your man page or maybe an external wiki. But in this case, it doesn't have that. And I can go over how modifying everything in here has basically the same problem. Modifying the colors, for example. What is CBLK? It's color something, but what does BLK stand for? Or CCHR? I have no idea. How difficult would it be to just have the name? Even if you want to have, you know, less than 80 character lines. We're only using 38 characters here. There's plenty of space to use a proper variable name. While I'm never going to stop complaining about suckler style applications, this is basically what you get with them. That's not to say that I don't like their applications. I don't like applications in that style. Dmenu is an amazing application. For example, ST, once you've got it configured to the extent you want it to be configured, also a great application. But getting it to that state is harder than it needs to be and could be simplified by explaining what is going on in your code base. But if you want a file manager that explains basically nothing to you, is basically just a programming project, you know what? This is a pretty good place to go. If you want to go and spend your time decoding this code base and working out what is going on, there's not many that are better than this, so... Give it a shot, I guess. For me, though, LF is everything I need, and I'm probably going to stick with it. And no, unlike the man page says, recompiling the source code does not keep the application secure. When you have source code floating around your system to recompile the application whenever you want, that's the opposite of secure. You just have unencrypted source code. I guarantee without a shadow of a doubt, there's going to be someone in the comments that says this is the best file manager ever and they've been using it since the day it came out and they could never imagine using anything else. And if you're that person, please tell me why. I would love to know. As for anyone else, let me know your thoughts as well. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, something better, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>